to be here in the presence of God. That itself shows that God has been good to us, isn't it? Amen. 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 This morning, I want to take a few moments to meditate upon the scripture before we have the coming of stories. So, let's pause here and have a look. Father Neville, we are grateful to God this morning. Thank you for your loving kindness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. I pray in a special way this morning, the light that we just read, the words that I speak, and with clarity and with power, because you are the God who gives me the message. Jesus, precious name, I pray. Amen. Once again, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 12. I'm sorry, 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 15 to 16, and this is that for reading that scripture. It says, And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. See, he says that he is eagerly desired to eat this Passover. Then in the next verse he says, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. You know, one of the most famous questions in American history is that attributed to Tennessee Senator Howard Baker during the Nixon investigation. The question was, what did the president know and when did he know it? It became a famous question because before they went into all kinds of investigation, it came to for the president to resign, all that. The question was asked is, or the million dollar question is, when did he know it? And how did he know it? Now, Jesus Christ, the hour has come and he already knew that this Passover will be the last Passover. And he says that I am going to have this last meal with my disciples. And he says, I am eagerly waiting for that. We all wait for a meal, isn't it? Of course, we are hungry, then we want to go and eat whatever is available there. I'm sure Harris has had a big feast there with all the children coming home. And they all stay different places. And uh, I was also praying because I need some help to move these things up, the committee is over. Last Sabbath was Chima who was here, today he brought his brother also. He became the help us. So, what I'm saying here is that, would you be nervous when you know that somebody is coming to have dinner with you, the last day? Or would you be emotional? Would you be emotional? You know, I went to boarding school, you always count the days when you go for the vacation. And my mother also is waiting. And that day will be a special food for us. A special is that, you know, they have fried rice and chicken curry. You can't beat that. And none of us beat the mother's cooking, is it? And she specially makes this one because she knows that my son is coming home after this eagerly waiting. Do we have that eagerness to come into the presence of God? Do we have that need? Because I don't want the Sabbath to become a routine thing for us. Oh, we have to go to church. You know, oh, today is Sabbath, or tomorrow is Sabbath. But that eagerness should be there with us because we are meeting the King of Kings, our Savior here. And today, as we celebrate this Lord's Supper, it should be, it should be much more than that. Because you see, Jesus Christ sacrificed here. Think about <clears throat> some of the last meals people have. You know, our brother Christopher is in the, in the, uh, prison ministry. Yeah, I call it prison ministry, but he's actually uh, in the uh, prison system. And uh, people who are on the death row, people who are on the 
that I don't know how many of you are uh, Petro in your prison, but there are certain places. They are given an opportunity to select their last meal. It will be funny for you. Just go, go and Google how people. One fellow said, I don't want anything. So they gave him just an empty plate and four pieces of food. That was his last meal. Timothy Medway, you, you know, he blew up the, one of those federal buildings because he has something against the government. Now, for him, his last meal was two gallons of mint chocolate mint ice cream. Now, I'm not comparing with what Christ had, but Christ knew his hour and he wanted the disciples to prepare. Passover. And he was taking part in this Passover meal. Now, you might have the words Jesus Christ here reflects is he says a deep desire to share this final meal with his closest followers. It's not only really desire, a deepest desire to share his follower with him. Because when you say deepest desire, it's much more than just having a meal with them. It is something to remember, reminisce, and also to let them know what's the importance of this meal. And also you know that there are powerful lessons from the Passover meal. The Passover meal was for redemption. Now here, Jesus Christ's deep desire is for a fellowship. And he says, that I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. He's looking at the disciples and he's telling them that this is a fellowship I want to have with you all. Knowing that what lay ahead of him, Thursday they have to eat, and Friday he's already going through the trial and crucified that afternoon. He wants to share in our lives, both in our joyful moments, both in our sorrow, and he is eagerly waiting for a fellowship. We have to understand that. That Christ is the one who initiates this relationship. And Christ is the one who invites. This morning I sent a couple of texts to people that I've not seen them. I said, you know, come join us for coming on service. I just want to. Especially invite. I'm impressed to especially send this text to you and invite you. But I was meditating upon this word. That is that Christ wanted to have this fellowship. Now, this cannot be a long distance relationship. Long distance relationship. There are some long distance relationships. My son was dating a girl here when he was going to. Uh, Berlin University, and then he moved to California. Then it became long distance relation. Phone calls. They have to media cell phone letter. They have to text messages, emails, and it didn't last long. It didn't last long because the long distance relationship do not last long. I'm sorry if you are in a long distance relationship. Pardon me for that, but. Because you want to see somebody, you want to have fellowship with somebody, you want to have in relationship with them, see face to face. And here is what Jesus Christ is telling. And this morning, I want us to know that He is inviting us. And what kind of meal is this? It's a Passover, a symbol of deliverance. And Passover meal, Jesus eagerly desired to share with His disciples, he is rich in symbolism. For Jewish people, it's a reminder that God's deliverance from slavery from Egypt. And here, God is teaching the people, or Jesus Christ is teaching the people, that they don't need a land. Even though they had a land properly for the Passover meal, but he was the land who would be sacrificed that the next day. And the Passover meal symbolizes the redemption. And that Jesus Christ brings the Son. What happens? How do you get this? Only 
only when you have that fellowship in you. So don't walk away. But you're invited. Because when you accept the deliverance of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, only then you can look forward to all this. And the verse he said that Jesus said, Before I suffer, I want to have this meal with you. And the suffering and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ we see later is his death on the cross. And suffering he refers to includes not only physical pain, but also an emotional and spiritual agony of bearing the word sin. That's why he said, Father, Father, we are forsaken. Because he lost that, because of his words, his heaviness of sins that he was bearing. He lost it, he lost his father's touch. How does Jesus' willingness to suffer for me impact your life? How does it impact? For some of the churches celebrate last for every week. We don't do it because we don't want to make it a common. That's the reason why we do it once a while. So we should be eagerly waiting to come together to have this fellowship and rejoice in coming together. Because this has hope in the fulfillment of the kingdom. He says, I'm eagerly waiting to have this fellowship with you. And then he says, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Here Jesus points out that when God's kingdom will be fully realized, I will see you and have this fellowship of you. That, that's the hope Christ left for each one of us. So every time we celebrate, we are doing it in remembrance. You know, this, this uh, tablecloth is covered here. I hope uh, Mr. Uh, It says here, in remembrance of me. See that? I'm sure you might have seen this several times. But not to miss, not to miss the, the message in that. He said, do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of his kingdom. In remembrance of the hope that is given. In remembrance of the fellowship. And in remembrance that the eagerness Jesus Christ has to have and have this fellowship with us. So coming in, we are reminded of Jesus Christ's sacrifice and also his soon coming, the promise of his soon coming. He said, I will not eat again until we eat in the kingdom of God. So I, you know, we all should be looking forward for this uh, for this uh, celebration. Not just quarterly that we come together. And I've seen a lot of people all the days coming in service, so don't think I need to go to church. That should make us proud just to come and have this worship. Even if you have missed other Sabbath, I don't want you to miss, but even if you miss other Sabbath, maybe to come to have this Sabbath, the third Sabbath, set aside. So that we can have a communion and come together to partake the emblems of God. That's one of the reasons why Seventh Adventist Church, any church you go on the third Sabbath, most of the church, unless something has hindered their program or they're moving to the next Sabbath, they always have it on the third Sabbath. I was texting one of a couple of our members who are not here because we are traveling. And uh, the in the text, I heard that the pastor here visiting a church this Sabbath, wherever they are. The reason I mentioned that I'm sure they will have communion service there. Because this is something customarily we follow throughout the world to have fellowship on the third and seventh. And Jesus Christ says that, you know, in Luke chapter 14, verse 15, it says, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. So this is the blessedness. That God is giving us to eat with Him because we look forward that we are going to have the same thing in the kingdom of God. And Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, it says, Write this, the angel said, Blessed are 
of those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are true words of God. You know, a lot of weddings takes place in the community. I don't get invited. Because the people don't know me, or they want to, you know, cut down on their uh, visitors list or guest list. But this one here, 19, says there's a blessedness there. Yeah. And we have to look forward to get that invitation. Mm -hmm. And when do you do that? Not sit at home. To have this fellowship every week and also especially on this communion Sabbath. And we, we see the heart of Jesus Christ laid here, there, openness, and he says that this is the eagerness of mine to have fellowship and his followers. That will be a joyful expectation of the day when we can have feast on that particular day. You know, America celebrates its Thanksgiving. It's coming very soon. It's on the 27th or the 28th of November. That's Thanksgiving. What happens? Everybody wants to go home to celebrate this. There will be a great family reunion. And people will be looking for her. And especially whoever is hosting the mother or the grandmother, they will be, you know, tearing apart themselves what to cook and how to prepare this special food. That eagerness. Because it is the meal, the last meal Christ was shared. Now, let's not leave it there. Let's not leave it there. But let's look forward for the invitation that he has given us. I will not eat it again until in the kingdom of God. You think we can accept that invitation? Does anything stop you from being there in that we are all busy with the world. We are busy with it. Sometimes it's so difficult to make a decision when you are with the friends and the peers. But the grace of God will guide you. The grace of God will take you through. And the grace of God will give you strength so that you look forward for that day when you can be with you in that day. Yeah. So today, with that thought, I want to invite you for. You know, it's a, it's nice that we are all here, but at the same time, we want to make sure that that we will not miss this opportunity because this is just a beginning. By the time you have to have this, it's just a beginning. We look forward for that day when we can come. gets married, we may not be invited, but this is one way that we are all invited. Yeah. That's going to be the biggest feast because what happens? At the head table we see Jesus himself. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, there may be a time that we come and we, you know, we had our little celebration and I have, we have some of you have come and take a part in that. But the thing is that we always, even now, once I have sit down and think, did we meet all the people? Did we see all the people? But it's not going to be like that because His presence is not limited. In spirit, He can be with everybody. And right now, the same Jesus Christ is inviting us. You know, we have uh, what is called ordinance of service before we take part in the communion. Now, this communion is open table. You don't have to be a baptized member of uh, this church, but you are invited to take part in this communion. But examine yourself and do it. And before that, we have ordinance of uh, ordinance, ordinance of humility service. That is, we go and wash our feet downstairs. Uh, there are three rooms. One is for men, one is for women, one is for families. And uh, one of the elders uh, 
really brought this thought into my mind that fellowship is not husband and wife, it should be beyond that. So, I want you to go and have fellowship with the men and the women. If you want to have fellowship with your own spouse, it is good. But I just want to put it out there. So that next time, we might have only just two places to wash feet. But till that we practice that, I want you to think about it and pray about it. Because this is a fellowship. And Christ personally invited each of I want you to go down and take part. After we come back, let us say that he's going to administer the emblems for us, along with the uh, theater and the uh, idiot. So we want to go and take part in the foot washing.